be some items that will have more discussion than others. So um, high school roof update, um, they're starting uh, August 17th. The VAC company is showing up to VAC all the stones off. Um, and their tentative schedule is 10 weeks to completion. So we're looking middle of October. Um, if weather holds out, it will be much quicker than that. Um, they will be doing the areas over the classrooms first to try to limit the noise over the classrooms of rolling their, their rolls and stuff around. Um, uh, it will be a glue fastening everywhere except for the gym um, and the annex gym. They will screw it down from there to save some. That was one of the, the things we're doing to save costs. So they were out last week, cut a couple holes to make sure the insulation depth was what it was so they have the right screw fasteners, the right lengths, so on and so forth. So they are good to go. I believe all the paper, uh, did, did the PO get cut to the WTI yet? Uh, I know as of middle, beginning of last week that it happened. That was the beginning, the last time I talked to them was. As soon as the signed contract came through, okay. Michelle did a PO. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we're good to go. You know, um, the VAC company is just very booked right now with all the school projects started um, and wrapping up. So, um, so uh, that's that one. Um, gym floor are finishing. All the gym floors <coughs> have been uh, finished. Um, the high school, we had two spots that the finish did not adhere. They came back, removed the, the new finish, took mineral spirits, prepped the area uh, to thoroughly clean it. It might have been a low spot in the wood that their, their machine just didn't quite get. Um, even though they cleaned it, that there could have been something spilled in those areas. Um, no cost to us, that, that's on them. They came back, that was done on Thursday. So we'll open that gym up again Friday. Um, so as of the end of this week, all gyms will be fully open for all, all schools. Uh, they came out great. Uh, you really can't <coughs> see the difference between the two contractors. So, uh, you know, it was just, it was just cost. Um, We'll do the GCA stuff because I'm sure everybody has questions on that. Um, door replacement discussion. Um, annex cafeteria. The student union area and the study hall rooms. When we were going through looking at uh, the rekeying and all the hardware, those were two doors that they thought they could get hardware to work. Uh, we found out that the hardware in the one door is, 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 is missing, is, has been removed. Um, they actually use a padlock to lock mm -hmm. the doors. Um, the other door, we can't retrofit the door. Uh, so you'll begin a price from me uh, for new doors for those for those doors to properly secure those two spaces. Because uh, there again, if somebody is in one room and they get to the other, they can't get out because that padlock would be on that door, right. which is a fire, fire code issue. So. Now let me ask, mm -hmm. do we have to lock those doors? We would have to lock the doors from people entering um, at times when the student union kids have their, you know, ping pong tables and their sofas and their fridges and all that kind of stuff in there. Um, Preston and Mem would be able to answer that a whole lot better than I would because I don't know what exactly they use those two spaces for. Um, Nothing really. I mean, besides the the student union area, well, for the super students to go back there and play right. their games. Thinking down the road, what if that becomes the admin office area back there? So why waste money on on refurbishing the doors? If it's well, then again, I'm, I'm going to get empty. I'm going to get prices. So it's yeah. it's you know, you know one room is empty and the other has some ping pong tables, a couch, and ice cream machine in it. Right. If we're going, right. to, I mean, if that's the area we move into down the road, two or three years down the road, why do we need? That? It's going to be already done anyway. Right. Right. So I'm I'm just letting you know that that was that was one set of doors um, with with that. Uh, I have to bring in somebody, uh, of course, the high school gym storage doors that are underneath the bleed, the bleed, the bleed, the bleachers. The one already has a padlock on it, a classman, a padlock. The other door broke um, during the season. Um, Phil Trasser was able to remove all the hardware, so right now we can't even lock those doors. So those are two doors that, that need, the, the, the lock locking mechanisms do not work at all. Um, and if somebody wants to get in there, it's not hard to cut a hasp off and, and get in there because the doors don't latch. So, um, but I'll, I'll begin you uh, prices on that. So when they come in to measure the storage doors, I was going to have them measure the other ones. And there's also, I don't know what the room's called. It's a team coach's room or something like that on the, on the I'd say the softball corner of the locker room areas. 
um, towards the hand handicap parking spots in that parking lot. There's a there's a coach's door that is there again. It's broken internally, um, and they have a padlock on the outside. Um, there again, that's a fire code issue. So that one's going to have to be done, irregardless. So when I and these I only found out about last week. So uh, when they're in to measure that 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 man door up, I'm going to have a, have them measure up all the other ones, and you guys can can say yay or nay, you know, to the other ones. Um, so that's that one. Um, uh, high school floor tile VCT discussion, and, and it's just kind of a heads up. Um, the cafeteria floor in the in the high school is starting to crack very bad um, in areas. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it during the year, but that may be something that may be coming to facilities to say, hey, we need to look at doing something in there as the floor tile starts to starts to come loose. The gym lobby floor tile has already has a bunch of chunks missing in the corners of that. Um, so I'm going to get some some prices for for next next year, you know, so we can so we can plan for it. So there are some areas that the VCT is starting to get it's failing, you know, after 20, 20, 20 years, you know, it's starting to crack the pieces are coming up. Um, so uh, you just want to make everybody aware of that. Um, high school stadium water leak. Um, I'm not sure if we talked about this in facilities before. Um, <laughs> The borough of Birdsboro had a leak, and they didn't know where it was. Um, supposedly sometime March, April, they realized it, that they had a leak. I guess they had some internal changes of staff, I'm, I'm, I'm told. Yeah. So they didn't really worry about it. They didn't, they didn't try to find it. Um, now that their kind of staffing got where it needs to be, they started to look for it. They narrowed it down to the high school. Of course, we don't have a major leak in the school, but there is a water line that goes from the back of the gymnasium that goes down to the stadium, feeds the bathrooms, and feeds the water line that's in the in the in, in, in the field. Um, that line is most likely broken clean off. Uh, they are estimating between thirty to fifty thousand gallons a day um, is going down that leak because once they close that valve their system stabilized within a day. Um, when, so I had uh, Stauffer uh, <coughs> Water Conservation, I forget what it is, like, I, Nate, Nate's the Stauffer's his name, whoever, all the utility companies use to find utilities, he came up on Thursday. Um, and he list, 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 listens for the leak. Um, so he found where the pipe goes, you know, he was able to find the, you know, to tra tra track the pipe and um, and the leak is most likely right outside the building at the 90, um, mm -hmm. at the bottom, uh, somewhere. Now we have no water coming up to the up, up up to the surface. So if this is the back of the school, the water line goes out, goes down to the stadium, turns right, follows the driveway, and then enters in at the concession stands. So the leak is very very loud right at the edge of the building. Um, and then he can pick the leak up about 150 feet down this piping. Well, if you look at the lay of the land, we believe that's where the water is running underground and is running with such force. He can hear it. He can hear it. He can hear the water running, but it's very faint. Um, that's a lot of water. It's a lot of water. Think of it's a lot of water. This is the this is the uh, the back parking lot right here. Mm -hmm. right? This is the the back doors where all the. Mm -hmm. This is where that um, the little monument is where you can trees is into the building. Where is that pipe coming out? Right here. Okay, we just ran fiber in there. Correct. Uh, right at We're we're, we're probably 12, 15 feet down in grade there. Um, fiber. So we're way underneath. The fiber yeah, was, to, was was to two or three feet. Okay. Yeah, I we because so they're gonna dig down here somewhere. We're digging right here. So up to the building. We're gonna we're gonna open up the side of the building, and that's where we have to start because the noise is the, the noise is, is it's it's unbelievable how loud it is. Because he actually what they do is they stick a long steel rod on the ground, and they put a mm -hmm. device on the top of it, and then they they have the, the special yeah, headphones and everything. And 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 usually when you have a leak, when you close the valve, you can hear it dissipate slowly. This goes away within a second. All right, so, so athletics and everything. We got teams practicing. Yep. 
we, we should be out of the way. We'll be out of the way of the teams. Um, we're going to be up on the up on the, the up building. on the McAdam driveway, right? The building. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, we don't open up a major can of worms when we open the ground up. They're coming Wednesday um, to to open it up. Um, we're going to dig very carefully because there's going to be a hole of some type. Uh, we're hoping the hole is outside the foundation and not underneath the foundation. Uh, um, where so all the nothing way. is cracked. I mean, the, the ground hasn't settled. The, the macadam hasn't settled. You know, the, the water has found definitely a point of least resistance. So hopefully when they built the building, like most cement contractors do, they wash out next to the foundation. So hopefully there's a nice shelf there and it just pushed the water away from the school and went down the hill. Does the water have to be turned off in the school? No. It's, it, the line's currently off. The line, the line's so currently turned off. Going out. It's just it's going to the stadium. The bathrooms and yeah, the, just, just, the it's just going to the stadium. Um, so right now you have no water to the bathrooms. The bathrooms are shut down. Uh, uh, so, but like I said, we, we turned it on for half a day, um, and uh, it, it's 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 impressive. So we need to <laughs> truck water for football. We, we will have this, if, if the leak, is, we'll find the leak. I mean, at this point, Nate Stauffer's coming back Wednesday when they open it up, so we can re-listen, you know. There'll be noise in the 90 when the water turns. Uh, there'll be a slight noise in there. This is more than just a slight right. a slight noise. So, so is Preston aware? Does he know? George is fully aware. But does Preston know? George, Preston should know. I, I, I would talk to Preston. I, I'll let him know. Tonight. Yep. We have to talk to him. I'll let him know. Because it's his building, so yep. he wants to know if the sinkhole is going to develop outside yep. his parking lot. <laughs> yeah, but luckily the ground has not settled. The, the, there's, there's, there's nothing to show any signs of a leak anywhere. Who, um, is, I can't believe is that the, water can go are, are we getting billed for that water? We pay a flat fee per month. Um, so I think the Birdsboro Borough may be coming to us and oh. saying, hey, mm -hmm. We've estimated this is the loss that you had in your leak, and they may be asking for extra right, money. But if we don't, do we get a usage on the bill? Mm -hmm. But then, how, so that's not really our fault because we can't. It's not like we could see the water usage jump by three hundred thousand yeah. gallons a month. I am correct month. on that. that we only pay a flat fee. I'll the bill. I, okay. I, I'm pretty sure all the schools are are, are that way. Tomorrow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the school. I know the middle school is. I know. I know all the schools when we had the other issue with all the right. sewer. We're, we're all we're all that way. Right. So. Yep. That volume of water should have been a pickup by then. That, that's rolled. They did they pick it up. They didn't worry about they it. They should notify. I mean, they, they should right. March, April, because Levan Excavating, who I used for the for the, the leak over the middle school, they told him about it when they were fixing up when he was fixing the leak for Birdsboro. They told him they thought there was a leak at the high school in April. Hmm. So um, they write every word. Right, right. So. Um, they could have mentioned it to you. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is Birdsboro. I forgot. Rita's, yeah. Rita's is my safety zone. I go to Rita's. <laughs> um, and then just speaking of high school water, um, we, we had some discolored hot water uh, at the start of, of the, the summer. Um, of course, I was told this happens every summer. Well, that's not. Oh, in Birdsboro? At the high school. Our high school. Right, but is it? Birdsboro has the same Birdsboro problem. Birdsboro has the same problem. A, they, they get high phosphates in the summertime, and, um, and they haven't ever been able to control it. It's well, like this, is more than just, this was more than just. Oh. Okay. I opened up the hot water storage tank, and I'll show you pictures that okay. I have on my phone. Um, we washed it out. We scraped it out. Um, I'll show you the video of the water when I started the hot water system back up. It was dark chocolate coming out oh, of out it. Oh, it hasn't been yeah, that bad. Um, but. <laughs> uh, it is now clear. Okay. So we were able to get the system to settle over the weekend, uh, and maybe I told I told a couple of people in the office, and then and I told Ashley that the hot water, if, it, if it's discolored, to let me know. We're still going to have to flush some of the faucets out and showers and stuff like that out, um, but that issue should be resolved. Uh, that tank has not been open in 20 years, uh, so yeah, it still works. It should I be, guess that's right. It should, it should be flushed just just from all the solids falling out in it. So. Um, just if you hear rumors that the, the water was brown at the high school, it, it was brown. It was it was a nice shade of do, tea color. Do we have a PM cycle for these kind of things? So we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're going we're starting, to. Yeah, we're starting. Um, to have that now. The 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 manhead cover that's on the side of the tank, I should be able to open that within 30 seconds once it's drained. It took me 10 minutes of a hammer, a three pound sledgehammer, and a piece of pipe to free up the gasket um, of just beating on this thing to finally get it to the pop loose. So. Uh, that tells me it's 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 never been open, um, so, but that's that. Um, 
Two items that aren't on here that I just want to I, uh, just want to make you aware of: uh, train software upgrade. Um, our our tracer summit system, which is our building automation system currently, is run off of Windows 7. Um, Microsoft is no longer supporting Windows 7 as of this year. Uh, train is no longer supporting the summit updates anymore because there again, Microsoft is no longer doing it. So we have a year to upgrade to the web-based version of, train, of the train system, which is the Tracer ES, which we have over at Birdsboro. Um, and actually, I had them, before I knew this, I had them propose it to me. I said, get me a number. Um, this was back in May. Um, I think it was 60, 61.5 for all the buildings to upgrade. Wow. So that'll be an expense we're going to have next next $61. year. Fifty-one dollars, you know? not um, bad. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I guess we have to have that. <laughs> Sixty-one thousand five hundred for software. To upgrade, to Get upgrade all, all the software. <laughs> I, I can do that. I can do that. That's fine. That's but I just want to make you aware that you know it, it's the, the they're, they're no longer supporting it. Um, on the train side or the mic, my Microsoft side, and they don't have an upgrade to go to Windows 10 because their Tracer ES is their newest. Version. Everybody's going web based. Right. Very well. Right. That, I mean, is it? But isn't that number seem like outrageously high? No. 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 Once again, you're in the wrong business. Yeah, you're in the wrong business. I can't. IT side of it is just un unbelievable the way. Software and doors. Doors. doors locks. locks. Yeah. Cut the grass. And, and well, <laughs> and, uh, you complain when Casey, HVAC came software. Casey came in every meeting with 24,000. Oh Remember that? Yeah. yeah, I know. We asked them for some different numbers. <laughs> We're just going the wrong way. That's all. Um, and I'm just bringing this up again. High school stadium cameras, now the football season started. Nothing was ever done with that um, from back in the day. Uh, is that something you guys want to pursue again to get yeah. to get updated pricing on that? That's something could, that could be done under the Safe Schools grant. Okay. We put in for this year is thirty thousand dollars. We're using the money to get uh, walkie talkies. If we can go radios, you know that's a little bit yeah. more, but thirty grand is a nice start. It's what about forty thousand for the repeaters and all that for the building. That was thirty. Grid? It's a little bit over thirty. This, I forget the exact number if without pulling. We the have. Out. Between building communications, right now you got the, the, the Cobras or the Motorola's phones from Tandy or Radio Shack. But if we want to get building the building communication, it's it's a little more high tech than that. But we but we looks like we can get about thirty thousand through the Safe Schools grant that we applied for already this year. We did it a couple weeks ago, and usually it's in our grant, which we've never applied for before. Hmm. So we can look at it this year, and whatever that cost is. Maybe next year because yeah. it's an annual grant. I was say we put in for. I mean, if we can do some of the, I mean, I don't know how much you can ask for. It's thirty. That's oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. But if I and mean, how much was it, that? It also pays about? for like SR school resource officers right. and stuff like that, which we don't use. Right. It, equipment is the easiest investment. Oh, I was to say maybe we can add cameras from somewhere else Correct. to get up to the thirty if that doesn't. I just happened to be going through my yeah. desk and I saw this and I was like, wow, it's it's football season. I'll just bring this along with me quick and just kind of throw it out there like, hey, you know. I still have that, so. Um, and then um, artificial turf usage discussion, natural grass area improvements. Um, uh, I'm not sure, I think I forwarded off the grooming study when the people came in to groom the field um, about the, we're, we're starting to get some excessive wear in areas of the turf. Um, George Schmidt and I have been having a bunch of conversations about how we can limit the usage of the turf. Unfortunately, with this drought this, this summer, our grass areas are not ready for us to really use them hard. Uh, they're just not healthy enough. There's not enough grass there. There's not enough good grass there. Um, uh, we haven't had a program in place to, to really make those areas. It's a shame we couldn't use the whirly. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I had uh, fish, 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 Fisher and Sons came in, um, and they and what they do is, and I'll just kind of show it to you. They'll, they'll, they'll go each month what you would need to to do with fertilizer, you know, weed control, grub control, aeration, seed in the whole nine yards, um, and they give a, a a rough 
number of, of everything. Now, this number will change a lot once they do soil soil tests. They come up and they do soil tests, and they then they want to get the soil to a certain point, stuff like that. Um, their preliminary plan is like sixty five hundred dollars uh, for a year, uh, and that's all of the seed fertilizers and whatnots. We would we would then apply it, you know, with with our with our ground staff. Um, but it's an investment that we may be able to delay replacing the turf a couple of years. If we can, if we can start this, um, and I'm planning on starting this in the fall um, to get this rolling, so we have a full year under our belt. So come next football season, soccer, field hockey, we're able to move people off of the turf and try to get us a couple more years of of, of turf to turf to, 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 to turf life. Um, we're going to try to get certain areas healthy enough that the middle school will play their games at the middle school rather than coming over to the stadium um, and that kind of stuff. Um, right now we just can't use the grass areas the way we should be able to do it because we've, we've never done this. Um, so I just wanted to let everybody know that you'll, you'll see more postings at the middle school, you'll see more postings at the high school. Um, you know, we, we really don't have a choice on this if we want to prolong the life of the, of, of, of the turf at, at the high school stadium. Um, you know, we're going to need to fertilize and water the upper field, uh, the, the practice field up top because they're going to try to use that for ninth, 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 ninth grade games. Uh, there's a couple areas over here at the middle school that we've never watered, have never really fertilized. Um, so we can use those water things that we bought when we did well, the Correct, school. but we've never, we've never we, used. We, use, we only watered just the two football fields at the middle school. That's all we've mm -hmm. ever taken care of because it's used in the fall. We've never really had a program put in place, um, so uh, just just you know you're going to see it's all well it's all fed, fed by wells, so we're not paying water usage or, or sewer on the water. So um, it's uh, uh, we have the wheels, you know, we have the wheels to, to water, we have the equipment to spread it, we have the equipment to seed, we have the equipment to aerify, um, you know. So it's just a matter of having the professionals say this based on your soil conditions and based on the type of grass that you have there. This is what you need to do. Um, so just just so you're just can so you're aware of it, we'll try to. Can we fertilize? <clears throat> yep. I didn't know if we have a license for that. Yeah, because of the we have a we so have a that is? we have a pesticide license okay. um, through the state okay. as a as a as an entity. Um, GCA is in the process of transferring their pesticide license up here, um, and the way it works is anybody can apply as long as the person with the license is within four or six hours, I forget what the number is. Yeah. So, um, so, and then we also have Steve Marino, uh, Mike Marino, our grounds guy's brother who does our spraying now. So if, if we can't do it with our staff, then he would just be applying it. Cause he's actually gonna apply our grub control okay. on Wednesday or Thursday. He didn't get back to me yet for over at the middle school. Uh, Cause we do have grubs over there. We have to treat every year. So. All right, so but let me ask, mm -hmm. what's the life expectancy of the field? The artificial turf, we're about probably six to ten years. Mm -hmm. How long has it been out there? Six, seven, eight, mm -hmm. seven, right. six, so seven years. So who plays on that field? I mean, football, lacrosse, soccer. soccer. What else? Youth groups have keys to the stadium. They have all their games over here. Oh, midget. Midget. No, Do they, they play all their games over here? I'm, I'm they used to just get to sure play on one. <laughs> midget because they use a concession stand. They use a the concession stand. All right, so the, 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 the little people football. What else? Your gym classes. Um, I mean, what's going on? I'm just thinking that, uh, that the field, the field should have. I mean, we don't. We're not out there running on it every day, are we? I don't see that many. I mean, I go to a lot of the events, and the, the, the track sits out there. The problem is, is your goal mouse are getting beat up. Your lacrosse goal mouse, your soccer goal mouse, your mid midfield is, is mm -hmm. getting beat up. It's, it's not flattening. the the field mm -hmm. itself is the the the, 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 the perimeters are like new. No. Right. Um, but it's it's those high use areas because the coaches are insistent that they have to practice with their lines, so they constantly practice in the same areas. I don't understand why they can't move their practices on different spots of the field. And this is not just us, not just Boone coaches. It's it's every school district run, runs runs through this. You, right. you don't you don't wear out your turf. You wear out the goal mouse, and from about the thirty to the thirty is yeah. what you wear out. Um, and then from about the 10 to the goal. All right, so the field's yeah. been out there for what, six years? Seven, six, 2009, yeah. I think. So, so we have 10. a good two, three years left before it has to be replaced. So I was talking to Rob Hurley, 
and we were looking at right now all, everything that we have to do has to come out of our pocket pulls from somewhere we need to generate new revenue <coughs> so rob is pushing using the field for other events outside the organization where we charge them a premium now that puts more wear on the field however I mean, music the march we, we want to do the music the marching bands and things like that hmm. where we can charge a fee to well, use and they're not that. using those spots Right. So, I mean, the marching band, or even if you have a, some professional game, or not, like, not professional, but other organizations' right. games there, if they're not practicing, it's probably not as hard on Right, and we want to be able to charge them. And Rob has done this in other places where it's, it's a premium that we're missing out on revenue. We're missing mm -hmm. out on a lot of revenue. And I'm sure you got my email about the, our, our logos, our trop, copyright trademark. Mm -hmm. We like to work with the athletic department and have them be a revenue generator also. <laughs> Scoreboard, field, things like that. I think that, so that was way one of the reasons for the turf. Yeah. And the stadium redid, redid well, when we, they redid the stadium, was it not? Like that we could run football. it out? From Reading came in, minimal uh -huh. charge involved. We had the uh, soccer soccer team from Reading. The Rage was the up here. Mm -hmm. uh, that seemed that then they went away. And, uh, I mean, even regional or local tournaments or competitions we could host. Right. Right. Where our boosters run the concessions. I think we're, I think mm -hmm. with, uh, the other Mr. Wolf, I think we'd like to look into uh, hosting a, a show. Right. So that, that was a home show. We were brought up last year. That didn't seem to work for U.S. bands. Uh, that's a big draw. So hopefully uh, we'll see what, uh, what he has. Yeah, because we have two years to raise, what, is it 300000 Four or five. Yeah. Happens. So we got to raise money. Well, and mm -hmm. it kind of leads into a topic that David asked me to kind of talk about too, but if Blazer Midget, I didn't, I honestly didn't know that the midget football used the the stadium because I know when my when my nephews played and my daughter cheered. I mean, that was they played the the deal was they got to play like their homecoming game on that field, mm -hmm. and everything else was all on regular fields. So if they're using our turf all the time, maybe they should be getting charged as an organization. I mean, most of the time it used to be at the middle school, right? They, they used do to have play a concession at the middle trailer over to middle school, or they used to play to the right. Of the t mm -hmm. of the stadium, like well, it'd be down towards or up the on the hill towards the baseball. Yeah, field. sorry, towards down. the base. And the you stadium know. should be the big hoo ha ha. Right. The, the like I said, it was the homecoming right. game, I mean, and it was the, the, the a lot of the fields were like were dirt. For. I mean, because we had no choice. Even the high school field, uh, they had to bring sand in to play and finish out the season because it was it was dirt. So, uh, it's great we can afford to fertilize, but you know, some they might have to suck it up a little bit to play with a little thinning grass. The practice. Well, like yeah. I said, if, if 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 they want to use the turf field, then maybe they should participate and, uh, in paying for the turf field. You know, I mean, I mean it's yeah. minimal, but well, especially if, if we need a half million dollars to replace the field, <laughs> we need to put something in right. place that can generate a half million dollars. And we don't end up not at one time, but you're right to complicate the bands, the tournaments, the track meets. I mean, track meets don't really get on the turf; they run around it. Right. So we got it. I mean, working with George Schmidt. He wants to do some stuff, but we need to work with maybe the boosters. And um, Rob is into it. I'm into it. Put something together where we can bring some with, with the new band director, the new athletic director. It comes into revenue enhancement. Yeah. And then it becomes self-funding because we Correct. can't pull a half. You know, that's I know we've looked at that over the years, and it seems like we have a good. We never had anybody we that could focus on that. I mean, we didn't have an ID that, I mean, like Ath had started to look at it he when he started. left, and then we didn't really replace him. Mm -hmm. We moved. You know, goose up to, you know, facilitator, but we didn't replace that position, and administrative staff was kind of stretched, so there was nobody to focus on well, that's, that revenue focus, enhancement that from the athletics. Focus for this year is looking at. I, mean, I was out today, and I saw a lot of Daniel Boone T-shirts, and I know we didn't get a penny. Well, from we looked at that <laughs> over the years too. I think Mr. Basil. With also, Pottery. I said I think Brian was going to look for a spot because there was a reason we didn't pursue it, yeah. and I don't remember what it was because I, I was believe chilling. there is another. Down south, Tennessee. Tennessee, Daniel Boone High School. Check. But we're the Daniel Boone Area School District. A unique logo. I've done this before. You, know, you can trademark it with the, right. the logo, the the phrase, the writing of it. And what I did was I got with a company, and we have one locally here in Birdsboro that sells everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they have a, they can put a link to our site. We get like two percent of sales, and right. it's it's authorized. They authorize seller of Daniel Boone gear. I, I think, honestly, that may have been part of the issue was that they felt it was going to hurt 
those local businesses well, that it, participate because it does hurt the people who are doing the bootlegs in their basement with the silk screen. It does. They add them to trunk at the I think No, but I think uh, even there's, there's the main several, one we utilized did not want that to happen, I, if well, I recall correctly. Yeah, there was, he did have a conversation with it, but you have several businesses that obviously want to promote that merchandise, and I think now you're alienating one individual. Now it's taking those other people out of the well, if, you, if you're driving them to JD Sports and, and pushing them away from Walmart so they couldn't sell it, which right. they sell a lot. Well, you know, you go into Boyers. So it'd be nice. Boyers Market sells it in Birdsburg. Yeah, so there's all the grocery stores around here selling right. yeah. Dana Boone stuff. But we're not getting a penny for no. it. No. <laughs> so, you know what? Yeah. So, no other organization not, would, would allow copyrighted. us to sell, sell your image. I checked. We're not, I mean, we we're not copyrighted. You're trademark. So they have them produced at the locally and, and they yeah. sell them there? Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So all I'm saying is we trademark it. We hit, this is an authorized seller, retailer. We can give one of the companies a link, put them on our site, and the big one who, who can do it, we do the polos, the hats, the license right. plate, all that stuff. We get a percentage of that, and we can license it. That's all. And those that are putting sites up and things with our image, we can say, hey, cease and desist, shut it down. You can't put our right. name on it or, or logo up there. That's all I'm saying. So I'm right. not saying only one person can sell it. I'm saying that we should own we have should. the rights right. to our name. Because we're not making a dime out of Boyers no. or Walmart or, as I was told, Hallmark is selling wristbands with their names on it now. And, and, and we're struggling for money, <laughs> and we're giving away our, our, our name and image. Let's see what Mr. Zuber's, because this was all, this is yeah, this is refreshing. Yeah, we, we covered <laughs> this even when I was in revenue enhancement, and there was a reason that it wasn't pursued. I but still I, remember I don't it. Wanna, I can't remember what it was. It's, too it's long. not like we're the Patriots where you just steal the pro logo and stick right. A lot of companies, a lot of, you know, little teams do that. But we're a unique name. Not right. the Steelers or the Eagles or the Hawks or something. We're a unique name. We should at least license our name and image. Blazers. And Can we bring the musket back? Yeah, and we're struggling for money, okay. <laughs> but we're giving away our revenue and our, our name and image. Well, Canon and the He wasn't here for that <laughs> And even if that logo is used by someone else, we could have our art department have a contest, redraw, redraw our yeah. logo that's unique, make, right. it, make it a fun event. Rebrand. Right, but if we're sitting here going, well, we need money, we need to raise taxes we got a half-million-dollar stadium fee coming up, and we're not even using it. Well, the right. eight-year-olds run around tear up our field. We need to put something in place that can generate some revenue. Well, and and, and that is, um, I mean, that is a, a valid point, and I think we're sort of on. Uh, do you want to talk about that real brief? I, it's not on the agenda, Kathleen but can jump I was asked. Well, we were contacted regarding the Amity Township Athletic Club in discussion was how many custodians are going to be necessary to clean up on a regular basis and red flags came up we don't charge them so you've, you've got uh, various organizations cadets youth organization uh, is that the that's the that's the band the music but they pay us an instrument they, they, they pay us an instrument yeah uh, Blazer, Blazer, Matt Club. Blazer, that's wrestling. That's wrestling. Okay. And uh, the two, you got BEC and middle school being used by Amity Township Athletic Club. And the volleyball pancake breakfast, Daniel Boone High School boys volleyball pancake breakfast, 44 Blue Productions. I'm not sure what that is. That was the cadets this weekend who was shooting, the uh, filming <laughs> the uh, the. I call it German Bugle Corps, but it's right. uh, German Bugle Corps. So, question is, once again, well, and I, I think <clears throat> I think we have to, and 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 we we need to make a point. We need to have a list of everybody that uses it because it's not just. I mean, it's not just uh, the 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 sports. It's um, cheerleading. Cheerleading, and then you have. Um, the adult basketball. Thank you. The adult leagues. You have karate over at Amity, Amity Elementary. You have, a, you have a karate. There's Wait. a karate crew that comes in every mm -hmm. two weeks. Wait. I thought that was the first name on my list. No, not, not, the, not the ones well, the, that are here. The Celtic Spirit. That's, that's here. That's here. There's, another, oh, there's, there's, another, another, there's another karate group that, that uses over right here right now, so. for about a three-month window, I think it is. Three when did that window. come in? That's been here for years. <laughs> well, hold on. When do they come in? Is it weekends or weekdays? Every night? Saturdays. Okay. Well, then the crew. Well, what I would do is, have, who is there? Is there an employee in the building with them? 
Mark Kukuro comes in, used to come in and, and stay the entire time. Who's that? That was the head custodian at Amity, because none of the other guys wanted the hours. All right, so I remember part of the contract with GCA is we talked about extracurricular and right. after hour things, right? If they right. provide extra hours, it's $27 an hour. Right. Right. The issue is none of these people have ever paid before, and they're going to they're gonna be mm -hmm. upset. But mm -hmm. the issue is, I mean, our, and, I've, and I've said this before, I don't, I know it's hard to tell groups that they have to pay because it's our children that are benefiting, but we, we are here to provide for an education. And just as we have the parents with kids who want their taxes raised so that we don't cut anything, we have the retired people who don't want their taxes raised because they don't want to lose their home. And they're not paying taxes to allow, in my opinion, recreational activities for the kids. I know, but this is easy. All, that we, all we have to do is say, based on the number of people, the custodial needs, mm -hmm. we have it $27 an hour, we charge them $27 I think it's going to be a little easier now that now yeah. it's not within this, the district. <laughs> it's a, a yeah. contractor. <clears throat> yeah. It's an I've outside been, contractor. Well, and I right agree. It, 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 I've never at been anywhere value. where it's free. It's always oh, it's a, a minimum for a cost. For custodial, I mean, and, and most places people will go. Okay, that's that's fair. They won't do that here. We came no, up two I, years I ago. I, I agree. I think it's right, but I'm I, and I'm You're okay with it. Right? I'm yeah. just saying we're gonna we need to we need to notify all the groups, and uh, well, the board needs to make that decision, and then they need to notify all the groups now, that there's going to be a charge. About this with it's, that, like an art, there was an art show or something. It was a Lions Club, wasn't it? Yeah, they had to put stuff down on the floor to cover the floor. Nine hundred dollars. Isn't that what you were talking about? Yeah, the middle school. I mean, the the, the, the yeah, Optimus sure. Club has their has their big craft show. Yeah, yeah, but that's totally fun. different. No, but These I'm groups are the kids, started, that's right? How it came yeah, up. And, we, and this came but, up three years ago, and I'm we got pushed back at that time from people because we were going to charge these groups. Well, if it's no. outside of the regular parameters of the custodial duties, mm -hmm. then they should be charged. I agree. So if it's on a Saturday or Sunday, then fine. But if it's on a Thursday at 8 p.m. Custodians leave at 8, what, 9, 10 p.m.? That's, that, that's within their work shift. So if you do a Halloween party or something, that's different. Well, when's, that, when's the AC group use it? Because I think sometimes they, I think the they use it some during the it's week. It's the basketball. Primarily, you're going to get, you're going to have bad day of basketball every Saturday from November to like Oh, well, then February. if it's the weekend, yeah. You know, then mm -hmm. they should be charged right. for one. Well, either that, or if they want to do it for free, they can do it for free, but then they need to, they need to clean it up. But they can't get in and out. Can't get in and out. So yeah. you have to have someone who has access. I'd write to the write some language up, and then bring it for all. At, at Muhlenberg, when my when my kids were cheerleading, my daughter was cheerleading. Our basketball was on a Sunday. We had the key to the outside door, the one outside door, and they had all the all the the interior, you know, hallway partitions closed. We paid nothing, but they also didn't turn the air conditioning on for us. They. Had, they didn't turn the heat on. They just had to set it there at their we, we, weekend setback. But we did have a key, and uh, that they would leave custodial supplies there for us to at least try to get us through the weekend. And if they couldn't, if we couldn't get we had too many people, we had to go out and buy custodial supplies, you know, toilet paper and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. I don't think we have that ability. I think you just charge the, the hourly rate. Right? You don't want to run like a mom and pop business. No, then right. sooner or later, you know, someone's going to fall back. Right. right. If right. someone gets hurt it. or something right. happens or it breaks, you're going to run out there. So I would say we work out if it's off hours, this is the hourly rate that we're charged. I mean, GCA doesn't have a problem charging us. Yeah. <laughs> and they're yeah. staying in business. And we're raising taxes and struggling to, you know, to stay open. Then we should pass those same costs on. I mean, I, I was approached I last you. week about uh, the Boy Scout troop that used the, for their car show. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a $200 bill. And he says, well, you know, we weren't charged in the past, but I said, well, things are changing, and there is a cost, and they're going to pay it. So going forward, they're going to be paying $200. Which school? The high school? Or? At middle school. <clears throat> middle school. 597 across the street. Mm -hmm. your, your administrative guidelines... Yeah. Really set it forth. Right, it's and we just haven't we just haven't been doing it because and and because people pushed back two years ago when we said we were going to revisit the policy and we never came. So I, I don't like I said I don't have a problem. I agree with it. Well, we as revisit, as as applied we differently. did Correct. redo the policy yes, to allow the business office to right. negotiate. You know, like I, for like the Celtic. And I'll be honest, I I have a major issue. We talked about this before. I have a major issue with the 
Relay for Life not paying for anything either. We discussed that, and I mean, now they pay for the 500 bucks, I think, for the for the field, but they don't pay for all the other fundraisers, I don't think. And Relay for Life isn't, that's, I think, what happened. That's where we got the major pushback, because, well, it's the school. No, it's not. The school's raising money for an outside mm -hmm. organization that people get paid from. You know, it's not like... And I said, well, what happens, my opinion is, what happens when the March of Dimes wants to use it? Or muscular dystrophy? Or where do you draw the line? And I know people get emotional because it's their cause and the Relay for Life thing's really taken off, but why should taxpayers pay for, for that? And we can certainly abide by our policy and the pushback comes. I say we just enforce the rules. Right. Like, I think if I they're think having dances or whatever, they're right. fundraisers. Anyone that's they're on the list that we have today, right, whoever's, whatever our standard list is, like, this is probably a lot of repeat business, right? Mm -hmm. Call. Anyone that you know is coming every year, they get a letter and say, effective January 1 or whatever the date is, like, we, we've had this policy in place, we've, we've not adhered to it, and, you know, we're in a, we're in a really tough fiscal spot, we, we, we appreciate that it's going to be a... a I think you know, burden, yeah. but I mean, we, well, we have no choice. We we have to. I think start with that charging. announcing with GCA, this is our reviewing our procedures. This is the going yeah, forward. And I don't think we should be apologetic about it. No, no I don't either. Running a business, no. and this, this is the current yes, cost. So some people forget. It's, it's, we're not making a profit here. Oh. We're just no. trying to. We're covering. We're, we're trying to make cost you, neutral for the school. Cost of it. You want neutral? Because we have been using the thirty-five dollar rate. That's fine. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Because we, oh, we it used to be thirty. I mean, our cost was probably thirty-five. Yeah. And it, but it also covers yeah. electric. The air. I mean, that covers exactly. a lot of things. Yeah. So I don't have an issue at thirty-five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think thirty-five is reasonable. For now. As long as you don't raise your price to thirty-six. That's right. <laughs> well, it, we'll have to we have revisit a, it. Yeah. My experience with this is that they do pay. You know, the first time is a chuck. But um, in the bigger time when I was before, they have the indoor soccer association and they use the gym. They use the, the stadium. And they pay. I mean, they they have tournaments from seven in the morning to eleven at night, and you know we, we provide the, the the services. And it's not only the service of the custodian; it's that some of the damage that happened to the buildings, because you have kids running everywhere. And they you know mark the walls. They do things of. And when people are putting out money, they're going to keep their kids in check. A lot more than when it's free reign. It's free. You do whatever right. you want. They don't yeah. care. They're not even charging us. So right. You put a bill. Hold on a second. Don't touch that. They're going to walk through and inspect it. And there's a little level of you know, caring about it. Well, right. there's so. the, someone that is going to be there with a uniform that shows that you know we're here to serve you. All right. And we got the so back okay so on track GCA Sorry, update yeah. and that's that's the last that's the last item GCA update you know staff and equipment supplies truck and equipment discussion and I'll let Lauren kind of run for well, if you want to go with the custodial I didn't get involved with the custodial and grounds equipment where you're at on that all right I got that here this is where they are in the buildings the list you sent me <coughs> I printed in color so you can't even know I used your copy <laughs> Oh, as far as people. Staff. Yeah, so okay. that's that's people. All right, so so basically, um, we we don't, we don't have Mark II who's back, but you probably remember the name. So we have one head. <laughs> well, so did the high school. You have a head custodian. You have the midday, and then you have one, two, three, four, five during the um, seven. It's five, six, seven later in the day. The elementaries basically have a morning person, a midday, and then a couple of the evenings, basically staffed by um, enrollment. Then you go down to maintenance services. There's two with one still, I'm sorry, three with, well, two with one pending. Have you helped Claire Trasser? The yes. top one? Yeah. yeah. We have yeah, one person here, Esther Gonzalez, at this building. She's been, she's been great. And oh, then, um, yeah, didn't Phil resign? Yeah. He's out. He's been out of workman's comp yeah. since the last we week of the school. Official, we got the official notice today that he can't work. Who is that? Who is that? Phil Trasher. Wait, who is the guy that resigned at the last? At the end of that the was last that was Phil. Right. And didn't didn't realize 
the whole process. So he, so he actually he rescinded yeah, his, rescinded. his resignation, correct? But, he had a workman's comp. but now he's on a workers' comp. Right. Under us, it started on the 21st of June. Yeah, okay. I thought somebody would do that sooner or later. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to say anything. But, but we did get a, we got a verification from our comp carrier today that said that he, his doctor had said he cannot work. So. And he's the carpenter, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he actually did hurt. He did hurt his back here on those days because I was with him when okay. he couldn't walk. So I will, I will vouch for him that way. I mean, he, he was hurt. He didn't do something stupid, did he? No, no. Okay. We, were, we were moving this ramp around, okay. and, and he twisted, and I heard it pop. Okay. You know? I mean, it's one of those when you go to the chiropractor, you, you, you hear and feel your back go. So I, I was standing next to him, and I heard. Okay. You know. Yeah. Did you help him up? He was able to walk, but it just was, it was, it was no. Yeah, no, he was okay. I mean, he could walk, but it was, 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 once we get the outside of the pending, at the pending. yeah, and I, I think they're also. I don't want to speak for you. They're also <clears throat> looking at their work level now, and those that are on this list may not be back if they goof off. I mean, just like any other job, they still have right. another month to prove themselves. Not with have, anyone. Um, and I have a, another four people that uh, we are running the clearances, just in case we need to move. Uh, there's, a, there's at least one person in this list that I don't think is going to be with us. At the beginning of the school year, so we got some other four people that we're running the clearances. They are not listed, but they're possible. Okay. To start in case we, we want to need them. Let me ask you, Valerie and Richard McMullen, are they related? Yes, brother sister. Brother sister. You don't have a problem putting them in the building together? Excuse me. You don't have a problem putting them in the building together? Not, the, not during this time of the of the summer clean. And when I said one of the person might not be here at the beginning of the school year, basically it's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the one that um, Rob asked you about? Yes. Oh, I see. I just picked out because I'm, I've never put relatives in the same building together. People who date together in the building because no. things happen. All right. So Valerie, is it Richard or Valerie? Which well, one they're brothers and sisters, so far not dating. It'd be a little, that'd be a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Richard is, is the one who was on the um, the online school. No, that's not right. All right. Yeah, we had a, we we caught Valerie McMullen. She was just going to be in the down the road in the two the rest of the hours. Yeah, she's great. She's been here, and Sandy and Lisa and everybody loves her. In fact, they made fun of us because we were so dirty. We actually cleaned her office before she showed up again because we felt bad <laughs> that we were looking. Ah, ah, no, honestly, but you didn't have anybody clean here, though, right? You guys just do it yourself. We did, right. but he would come through and do the trash and everything. And I had a Rob and I had this well, part of our conversation. We really let our standards down. We lowered our expectations, and then when they came in, the, the, was the other guy who was with he was over at Amway, okay. yeah, they cleaned, and we were like, "Wow, this is nicer." <laughs> you, should, you know, you just kind of lower your expectation because that's what they you know they're working. And we'll do it ourselves. Don't worry about it. But when they came in, Nasser was by herself. It's like, wow, this is nicer. So, it smells better, huh? Yeah. And she also does the river rock side. So we went we out, and all three of us went out today, inspected the buildings, everything with the high school because they were waxing, and they were fine. You know, we we got a, um, floor plans that were done already. Um, we're going to hit the high school call Thursday or something, or one of those days out there, whatever. But the rooms are getting done. Um, we looked at spot painting, the lights, the things are repaired, the ballast at, at, at certain buildings need to be replaced. But they're always the high ones. It's where we need some sort of lift to get in. We need a lift for about a week. About we a week or two, we'll have it. To get to the, the auditorium lights, the, and then the Moccasy, the, the entrance, that super, what's that, like 50 feet on it? It's, it's up there. I'm not taking that above. <laughs> you know, smoke the, alarms, too. Did you say the smoke alarms? Yeah, smoke alarm, clean smoke alarms, because I guess one or two went off. The, the sure. cupola is at the middle school. You know, yeah. uh, I mean, what, what a waste of money. But anyway, you know, they have smoke detectors all the way in the top of there, you know, with 
light okay. fixtures. So there's a lot of waste still, money at the middle school. There's still stickers on the windows. So when we get, Library. we have to have an articulated boom lift to get up there. So once we're up there, we'll take care of bulbs and stickers and smoke detectors. And does, Esther, does Esther here at the administration building, does she take the flag down? Well, we talked about we that. We need yes. that. Yeah, because it wasn't counting. It wasn't counting. I told you, flag is number. I told you, right? Yes. Flag is number. I one. warned him. I warned him on the first week you were here. <laughs> yeah, but, but I, I have to give Casey credit though. He's doing a lot of the work now that should have been done over the years. That just like like the, like the hot water unit over at the high school. This stuff should have been prevented maintenance for years, and we're not doing anything now at the schools. I don't think that should not have that. GCA is coming up, wow, this was never done before. Well, where's your preventive maintenance? Well, he was always running behind our union employees who were giving him pushback all the time. You know? And just like this building or at the high school, we, we went out there. Melanie said that her floors were never were waxed last year. And she was oh. But it's just pushback from the staff that, well, we're not doing this, we're not doing it. They're pushing back to Casey, which is not fair to him. You know? But now, same, some of the same people are under new leadership, under new rules, and they can't do that, and they're doing their job. So they have the skills, but you know, when you have a group, and when I met with them over at the high school before they signed up for everything, they were still acting as a union. I said, hey, you guys are no longer a union. You guys are individual. Let's take care of you. And they kind of put that, you know, it changed their opinion a little bit. Now they're doing things the right way. But it's, it wasn't his fault, you know? I mean, you're struggling to push him along. He's trying to move staff. and. There's always a couple employees that are always telling them, hell no, and they're not, they're not doing it. But you see the level of work that could be done by a couple people even in this building. So how many, out of, excuse me, how many out of the 32 that we terminate stayed with you? Uh, so yeah. I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, five six, six, seven, eight, eight. Okay. 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 including grounds and maintenance. Trash is. Yeah, I mean, I counted him. I counted well, and you have, uh, I mean, and you have 36, so, I mean, we had 32, so, I mean, they're fully staffed at this point, basically. Well, we had 39. Or 39, okay. Wait, when I first when, got here, Right, we lost were, a bunch. They started and dropping just, like flies at the know, end. Of <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're getting into the maintenance uh, deal and uh, I drive him crazy because I call him 20 times a day and say, you know, how is this? So we still don't know all the inner things that are going on in the schools and some right. of the little secrets and some of the little closet that he has, yeah. the stuff that we need to find. Um, but I think that um, and the way that we have programmed the, the staff to work. And what uh, Mr. Harris says is true. You know, we tell them because they come with that group and say, how old is going to be my wages? I said, we don't talk, in, we don't talk, I don't talk in a group of two. Right. You know, everyone's is individual. And I think that by stating that, they somehow understand that, you know, now I'm not going to be evaluated in my performance for the things that we need to do. Um, hopefully we have a good product for the schools. Really. Now, we do have two meetings planned, one with the new subservice, Precision HR, and the other with GCA, with the principals. So Rob has one scheduled Wednesday here for Precision HR with the subs, because there's some situations with that too dealing we're dealing with, because we're coming off of a group and us managing in a house and versus a company managing. GCA, we're going to do the same thing one day this week or next week sit down with the head custodians and the principals and talk about expectations and duties because before, right before I think we signed the contract, right after we did, I asked all the principals, is there anything unique that the, that the custodians doing your building? It's really not part of their job description. You know, putting cones out, greeting kids, whatever. Mm -hmm. They're all like, no, 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 no. Yeah, there is. But there is, yeah. There is. <laughs> Changing the marquee signs, you know, putting the new, the new numbers out and everything, the letters. So at one school or two schools, or one school the secretary does it, and one couple of schools the custodians do it. So that's something that's not part of the job description that, you know, that someone's a good guy, I'll go out and, and, and do this for you, Dane. So we had a talk with Dane today. We're at a school and say, Dane, you know, you don't have to do this, but we need to talk with your, your team. So we're going to bring everyone in over here somewhere and just sit down and have a nice 
discussion, and we find if we do everyone together, it, it clears up a lot of the, well, that's not what you told Dane at that school, and you told Melanie that, and bring them all together. Sometimes the principal asks a question that the principal didn't think of, and it works much better. Also saves time from going to school, school, school. So. Sounds good. Um, the only other thing I would throw out, and I don't, I, I don't know if we need to do that or not, but I know Casey's role is kind of changing because I guess now he's kind of overseeing it. So I don't know if we need to, you need to relook at his job description and if we would need to update that. Well, you know, just I mean, I, because may, maybe may, I don't know if we need, or if he knows if he feels comfortable with what his role is, and then what he's being judged on performance-wise. So if we need to reevaluate the job description to make that easier or more tailored, um, that's up to you and him. But you know, do you still have, do you still have direct reports? Not really, because no, there's no, nobody, there's, there's no employees. There's no and, you know, I was considered GCA contractor, so yeah. you know, Doug, Doug and I are trying to still figure out kind of everything, you know, you know, um, on what works best for him and I. Is it is it is it emails? Is it just work orders? Is it you know what what we're 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 still kind of trying to figure out with the, with the staff he has too, you know, because I keep on like, hey, do, do you have staff for this? Well, the, the, they're coming. Uh, okay, we, we can we can wait on that, you know, kind of thing. So we're we're still trying to figure out things. Um, you know, and there's still times where I'm going to have to fix stuff. I mean, it's just it's it's just the way it's going to be. You know, honestly, these two um, should be joined at the hip. I mean, he's managing the crew. He's he's protecting the building or, or school district's interests. So they should be one and the same. He should make sure. Right. Casey should make sure that the GCA is getting paid. They have a contract from July 1st. It's on. Mm -hmm. So when something needs to be done, if it's per the agreement, it's getting done, and he needs to hold them accountable. For, for the work. Now we have an issue at the high school painting. Painting went back and forth, where I thought painting was outside the scope of the contract. Lauren thought it was part of it. We talked to Subers, and Subers thought we were talking about general painting, I guess, but it's not. It's, it's outdoor painting that we that the expertise isn't really in house for. So that's something that we have to contract out for. So I asked GCA to go get some estimates instead of just waiting for the final answer. And they got three, and it's, it's a range of 20000 to, what, $100,000 to paint on the freaking awning outside. And wrong business again, you're in the wrong business. You paint awnings. So, oh, specifically. <laughs> yeah, deep pockets. So we, that's something that has to be done. But that, once again, that's something that wasn't done for years. So we're coming across up upon these things that should have been repaired years ago mm -hmm. like the like the water heater like the, the doors outside, the doors <laughs> the padlock you know phone, so now yeah. it's coming back bathroom partitions I bathroom partitions forgot. they're in they're just yeah. not finalized yeah. and the sinks and stuff they start on those today so we'll have them wrapped up in a week i didn't yeah. interrupt no, that's okay everybody. but once again just the drains the weren't collapsed. done I just yeah. things that he was told why work wasn't oh, the done. drain wasn't collapsed no, they weren't collapsed they just no. didn't do it they, they just didn't feel like putting the sink back right five minutes Contractor so was here that's five a minutes. A lot of the open. stuff that he's uncovered. <laughs> I have a video of it as well. Yeah, so. that he's uncovered a lot of this Sweet. stuff that we can make things better, but no one's bothered to dig it. Oh, no pun intended to fix it like he has. Well, we're gonna so, be digging this week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. maybe the snow. <laughs> cool. yeah. do, we, what's the, do we have a mechanism in place for the you know, for the feedback? Like we talked about, you just mentioned how Casey's gonna make sure that he knows right. And vice versa, like, <clears throat> what's the... Like, are the principals doing a like, checklist who's, who's, and set forward in it weekly, or, yeah, you know, how's that... Aaron, Aaron has one at the high school where he does a weekly walkthrough, and he'll do a walkthrough, I guess, with probably with you. Yep, and I'm going to start to, doing that. And at both the, of you. Like, at the, kind of like we did today, at through the buildings, do a weekly walkthrough. He has a checkoff sheet that he scans and sends. That's what I... Yeah, and, 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 and sends it in, and that way we know, and also work orders. Because we should be still getting work orders in, and I met with the GCA analyst guy Anthony, who was working on reports for the board that will look at work order time, yeah. costs. Um, some of the things weren't really utilized, like the why it was broken. Was it vandalism? Was it just preventive maintenance? Also putting us on a PM schedule, like you asked for, things like that. So that's that's coming down the road right is now. There, is, is there going to be any kind of data collection around that? So like mm -hmm. yeah yeah. yeah. That does it all in it yeah, does it all in house. Yeah. Makes pretty yeah. charts. Yeah. And the, 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 the way we don't have desks with rocks holding them up. Yeah. 
The average time is 44 minutes <coughs> per work order. That's because they would put yes. it in when they after That's they somehow our fault, but we didn't know about it. Minutes to enter the work order that was complete. <laughs> I'm serious, and, I, and that's, 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 that's no lie. I mean, well, I, so I, the work orders are one problem. thing. When I'm talking about, like, you know, the, 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 satis the, the satisfaction, satisfaction survey, issues, like, right. I think it would be good for us to be able to say, hey, the, you know, per the administration, we send this school has a 85% 80, rating on, you know. We have, we, we have something that's called the, the report card. Yeah. And we send to the, to the principals and the administration. They say within the last 30 days, grade also this. Yes. And then they will, they will tell us. Okay. And um, it's a it's a tool that we use to basically to know what we are not doing because we know what we're doing. But like I feel confident that you guys will be on the same page. It's just that if, if things get at, at an individual school <coughs> or with an individual right. building, um, if, if if something's not going well, you're not always going to know. Right away, or or maybe something that's happening over time. I think it was it was basically you know, we had talked about this um, after there were some conversations with other school districts. You know, like we had before we had signed the contract. We had what are your experiences with GCA? And most of them were I think we got they were pleased, but they you know they did say hey a couple things like right from the beginning a couple things we didn't do that we should have. And one of them was follow up and make sure that things were being done right from the get-go, that expectations were set, and that we had some, some form of way to know that within a couple of months, like, hey, this, is hap this isn't going well in that building, or this service isn't being done properly, or whatever it is. One other thing that uh, is really important is with that program, with the report cards, is that uh, the principals of where this assignment is school to perform that, that report. I get you. It gets to us. Yep. Because what happened many times is we, uh, I personally took it to the principals, and some of them said, "Listen, I have too much stuff to, you know, to do this now." And if I had the time, I send the field. And then it goes one month, two months, and something that uh, you know that they were supposed to give us the feedback. At the yeah. Moment. Yep. It don't. It don't happen. But then three months later, they say, "Well, but you know, three months ago oh, this happened, and you guys didn't do it." Well, we didn't knew that. Uh, or we didn't, you know, we didn't have the, the opportunity to, to, to do that. I guess that uh, there's two things. Uh, we can establish any kind of programs, and we have many programs, you know, to facilitate that kind of information between the schools and, the, and us. Um, but the support from the, from the patient. Yeah. Now, the one thing I can tell you is that uh, we took over July the, the 1st, today is almost the 8th. And all the principals so far have been really, really uh, supportive uh, with my business to the schools. I go to all the schools almost every day just to see the guys where they're working. And all of them, <coughs> there, you know, they say, I'd ask them this, whatever. They know exactly what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. And they give me the, the feedback. Um, it's impossible for me to be in every single hallway of the schools, all the five schools. But uh, like Jenny today, she knew exactly where to go, why it hasn't been done, what room needed in the chairs. Because when she gave me that kind of information, you know, I know how to direct the efforts. Especially now that we just try to place myself. Yeah. And um, sometimes I go to cases and say, hey, okay, see what it is. Because I still don't know what some of the things are. He sent me an email and he says, do you know the uh, humidifiers at the Albeck? I said, really? Where? You know? We don't know because they have them all over the place, and we have to get the horses because we don't know where the horses are. Uh, so there's many things that we're still trying to learn, you know, on the go. Uh, the principals, uh, the ladies and secretaries, they've been very supportive, and uh, they've been helping me a lot so to place myself. And uh, as I say, I try to encourage him sometimes because he sees me sometimes, and I think he says, "There's 20 questions coming my way," because. I'm, I see him parking and I get out of my office <laughs> because I know I'm going to catch him in the door because if not, I know that he won't get into that fund or whatever. But I can and tell you that June, July, August is facilities time. Mm -hmm. The moment, the day after Labor Day, those principals could care less because they have hundreds of kids, thousands, in their building for academic reasons. Right. And all they care about is if it works or not. So this is our time. So they've been doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. The day school starts, those principals go into another mode. 
and it's all academic programming. And all they want to know is, hey, my fountain's not working, they're going to walk away. The next time they look at it, they want it to be working. They don't know if it's an hour right. or 20 minutes. Right. So it's really important that the communication, the work orders, and we track these things, and we can push back and say, oh, just like you did today, when, when someone's running around, oh, you said, but George. George is running around. George sends me a frantic email, Schmidt, <laughs> AD, about the vehicles and everything. In case he goes, I just talked to him. So I said, just follow it with an email, CC me. He goes, oh, yeah, I, I, thanks. So Janice Aaron sends out a friend in the email. I don't have this, I don't have this. I said, let me look at it. Give me 24 hours, I'll look into it. 20 minutes later, I had the answer. She never signed up for it. So we have to be responsive. We got to cover our butts with email, too, because people will challenge it. But the guys are doing a good job. And he's doing, a lot, like I said, a lot of stuff that wasn't even done for years, that trying to catch up with stuff. Well, and that, I, that's good, and I'm glad, you know, I'm glad it's working well or seems to be working well. I would just, hopefully, we can impress on the principals or whatever that, even though school, the academics is in, that we need feedback on, on the services because we can't address the issues if we don't know about them, and right. we don't want to, we don't want to be wanna find out, out about up here a year from yeah. now right. with the people, well, you know, or the, the dead mice. Uh -huh pictures on Facebook you know, well, or and whatever. The other so. part is too, I mean, not that my role has changed a whole ton, but hopefully You'll I won't have to be out there right. fixing as many things that the maintenance staff should have been fixing. Yeah, I mean, and you'll have time to go around and look at the so buildings. I'm, yeah. I'm hoping once he has a staff in place and and I have the comfort level with the staff that they that they that they can fix what I'm gonna you know, what they would need to fix, then at that point, you know, we I can start really kind of just making sure and, and kind of, you know, being on the roof more than just, okay, the belt's busted. I had to go up and change the roof. And, oh, by the way, two of the roof drains are blocked up. You know, I can actually do building inspections and, and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of, and that's, you know, that's that's where I, I, I need to be right. doing that a whole lot more to, to have a better report for you guys for planning down the road. You know, because right now it's, here's, Here's, here's the fires for this month right. kind of thing, you know, so. Um, Speaking of mice, yeah. oh. um, one, of, one of the office people told me that the camera crew, film crew, left the doors open at night, and now we have a mouse, a, a mouse problem. We, 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 we caught about six of them in the annex, and um, <laughs> Ehrlich's was in. I asked him to put extra glue traps in, and he actually came. He was in a, another customer the other day, so he swung by and put the new glue, and he has, and he has caught six. So... Hopefully our, our 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 mice issue is is getting is getting resolved. You know, um, well, Nutrition so. Inc. was looking for alternative. <laughs> oh, <laughs> alrighty. <laughs> well, moving right along, uh, <laughs> since we only have like 15 minutes, 10 minutes here, um, I want to touch on the equipment because I think, uh, and I, I um, I made copies of what Lauren had sent me for the, the, the members. I don't. I don't know. You probably have one, Jim. Do you want one? Um, which I guess was the. Um, I'm going to hit the, the, the just the, the grounds equipment just real quick. Okay. Um, and, and, sure, and there again, <laughs> February fifth, February fifth, two thousand fifteen. Uh, Match Legal from the Deer Country had given me an email price list of what our equipment was worth in a trade. Um, because I had looked at, you know, we had talked about equipment and consolidating equipment and possibly buying another piece of equipment, so on and so forth. So um, I, I, I found this email tonight. I, I'm surprised I still had it, but I, I did find it. Um, and I just was comparing it to the email that Lauren had, had forwarded. Um, you know, GCA is offering, um, we'll go to the 1435 mowers, which are line items 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, the John Deere 1435s. It's all on the back here. That sheet. Yeah. So they're um, all okay. The 2005 1435. Yeah, those are all the those are all the front deck mowers that we have. Um, mowers the, only. Mowers mowers only. Correct. Why is um, one worth six thousand? The six thousand dollar one is has an enclosed cab, an actual glass okay. stru structure cab on it. Um, so just comparing our trade-in values of at 2015 to compared to what the offer is, um, the trade-in value in 2015 was $4,500. Um, GCA's offers $3,500, and the one with the cap, uh, the trade-in value was $7,500. GCA's offer is $6,000. Uh, 
Um, so I'm just kind of going down the list here just to kind of give you guys an idea. Um, I am not in the tractor business, so I would refer back to Deer Country anyway to give us an, an updated trading value. Um, the 4310 tractor, 2005 John Deere 4310 tractor, GCA's offers 8,000 trading value in 2015 was 9,500. Uh, there again, we have used it for a year and a half. Um, you know, every, everything here has been used for a year and a half. Um, the 950 tractor, they're not offering. The 770, um, there again, the 2015 trade in value was $5,000. GCA's offers $3,100. Um, so, um, you know, those trade in values were a year and a half ago. I'm not honest. I'm going to honestly say I don't know how much a tractor depreciates. You know, once it hits a certain point, does it does it drop another, you know, thousand um, dollars? Let but me it, ask you, trade in value. That means we're going to buy a new one from them. No. We yeah, well, correct. So so uh, they would be able to read to, to clean this up and then and then. But they're going to resell it. Not. So, well, I can no. tell you that from my my experience, if you auction it, you're usually going to get more than trade in value. Right. Plus what your hours were reported at, at that time. Right. Right. And, and now you and have add on hours. And on some pieces. Because they're going to turn some it around and resell not. it. So right. they're, right. So I'm just, you know, I wanted to, that, that's the only information I have. I would have to, you know, refer to, to, to Deer Country to come in and give you an updated price as of today. And actually, Match Lake was here <coughs> two weeks ago and just a, a, a drive by more or less. Hey, I'm in the area. Uh, I ordered just some parts from him uh, for some things. But uh, other than that, you know, um, so, so there's the values of uh, that equipment. Um, the, the GCA's offers here for the aerator. Um, Lauren had looked up the uh, value of that new, and I, I don't remember, Lauren, you can jump in. And, yeah, it's close, closer you know, to 10. Um, the top dresser, um, you know, $1,000 for that. That thing's like brand new, so I would have to actually get you uh, uh, an accurate number on that on that or what a new one was the land pride uh, overseeder um, that's a slip seeder uh, you know I think the last time I looked they were about seven six or seven thousand dollars new um, somewhere in the neck of the woods ours was not used hard it was used hard in 2005 probably 2005 six and seven to get the the turf fields of the middle school where they need to be um, I, I don't believe we've used it in the last year and a half. But now are you going to use that with the, oh, but they're doing it. Never mind. They, 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 would, so <laughs> they would be doing the work. Whether warm. we keep right. the equipment and they use our equipment or they purchase right. the equipment, yeah. the equipment's still on site. So we're, we're able to, to, to do those services to our property with either. But I'm, what I'm saying is if we sold week. that to someone else, they would have to have their We would then have to hire, they, we would have to either hire somebody to come in and do that. Uh, because they or they would have to provide their own equipment to do that to do that job uh, there again that's not something that we do on a regular basis so um, you know so All right, but let me ask though you got these these prices a weeks ago right okay. whenever the first offer came in the first of the month first of July yeah. all right so this so that's a, a month ago and we're sitting here in a facility committee meeting, and this is the first one we've had, and you're pulling an email that's a year old, coming up with off the pricing. We've had a month to, to look at the differences in price. And Lawrence, I know, has been talking about this and met with the, the their grounds Google guy, who seems really impressive. So I, I think there should be another column or a couple columns here where we look at other places. I don't think it's fair to Lauren to put this together a, a, a month. I mean, you've been working on us for over a month, and then you're you're going to pull out an email from 2015 February saying that we could have gotten higher prices. We got to work together on this because now we're coming down to it. What do we do with, do with this equipment? Where it's almost Labor Day, starting school, and we're going to go back. You, you put in to the committee that GCA is offering too little, and now we need to go out to find other people. Well, that, well, that well, well di didn't. Uh, that what was that what site saying. we were listing some of the stuff on? I, I, said, right. on I said at the facility finance committee, what I'd like to see is if we dump this stuff on municipal bid for mm -hmm. two weeks. Well, you got a little under two weeks. You could put in what GCA is willing to bid as the minimum as the reserve, and if we get more, we get more. If we don't, we don't. Um, 
you're not, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't take what Casey's saying as we could get more on a trade-in because you may or may not. He's saying that was the last offer that we had. Um, I, I don't, to me, the only way you know what you're going to get from somebody else is to put it out there. So, so well, you, back but GCA say. buys the equipment. It doesn't mean they're using it here. They can use it wherever they want. Right. right. And the reserve, that's based on we're accepting the GCA's little bit. We could make that reserve higher. We could, yes. Like based off of the numbers that, that you got there, that could have been given back to Lauren and say Lauren could call them back and say, hey, we have. And I printed this on. list off from the email I got over the weekend. You, so I just gave Casey the flash drive from when we were doing this auction thing last year. I think we've got pictures to be posted. Um, there, should, there should be a whole bunch of these things. And uh, I was saying the other night with finance, Scott Matz could jump on the website. Mm -hmm. right. Tomorrow's got the information. Jump on the website and uh, post post the pictures. And because uh, these updated numbers going. from the email just came out last week, that and there, there are new offerings. I mean, some of these numbers are different yeah, I sent than what they offer. The, I sent one after the finance committee meeting, nine o'clock Thursday night, when I got back to my right. office. Yeah, and that's the list. That's the, that's the list. So anyway, that's. Uh, but like I said, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I'll call Match Legal. He he offered because I said to him I may need him to come back and, and give me revised um, numbers. I don't have you know, I, I will, I will make that phone call and he'll stop by. Right, right, and he'll do it pretty much right, right then right. and there. So that's not that's okay. Um, that's that's grounds. What about custodian? The custodian. Who buys equipment is to use here, not necessarily taking someone else. I'm not saying you would, but you could. Yeah, we want it. Right. Um, and um, then, okay. got with this other stuff. The, I mean, the I custodial equipment. Um, to be honest with you, mo most of it is 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 fairly old. Um, you're, you're not going to get a whole lot for it if, if you go to shop it around. Um, I've talked to a couple of custodial vendors, um, in, in regards to it, um, like our burnishers, one has an oil leak and needs a couple hundred dollars worth of repairs. One needs a battery. I think one needs a starter, possibly that sometimes doesn't start right. Um, you know, so the, the big dollar items that would that would have been our cost, um, I, I think I think the numbers are fine. The the only the only ones I have issues with, um, we purchased. Um, if you look at the high school equipment line item number one, the Expedex min, min, Mini Mag, that is the walk behind floor scrubbers. They were eighty one hundred dollars. They're a year old. Um, Expedex flat out told me they'll give us four to five grand, and they'll resell it in a heartbeat. Um, so I, I definitely think their their eighteen hundred dollar offer is 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 very low um, on those two, um, and then the uh, I just have to find it here. Why is one power washer nine hundred and the other two forty? The ones uh, uh, more or less it's one you can inject the, the soap and everything into, um, and it it it, it, it regulates the soap. The other one are just your normal power washers. Um, and then the other one are the, hang on. And all this equipment is parked right now, not in use? They're using it, and they've been using it all summer. Um, and the Tomcat Edge, the, the two the two scrubber Tomcat, one's at, at, on Amity's list, and one is on exactly. um, the middle school's list. It's the fourth item on the middle school, and the third to last item on the Amity Elementary. Um, those were purchased last year for the, the, the stripping of the, the, the calf floors and everything to do the, the, the perimeter edges. Those were, I believe, learned $2,100, $2,200, right around $2,000. Um, and their offer is $300, and they're a year old. So I would, well, um, so I those would are the recommend only, those the the only items that I really, you know. I would recommend, I mean, I, I, I get input from the rest of the committee, but I'd, I'd make that recommendation on, on the same. Pull out those things that you think are are, are worth something. And, you know, if, if the manufacturer will give us 4000 back, that's our minimum bid okay. acceptance, and put them on, on the web, on the auction site, too, and see what we get. Um, I think we, I mean, I think we owe the taxpayers getting the most we can for these things. And if GCA wants to match whatever the highest bid is, fine. If they don't, then we sell it to whoever wants it. I don't know if anybody else on the committee has a yeah. suggestion, but. And we also have a number um, of kitchen equipment, too, that needs to go out. So we that can go on that site, too, if you want. So we need to do an inventory, have the board declare surplus. Correct. 
and then right. put it out there. Could we do a, because um, at this point, you're, you're only going to have like eight days or nine days for the auction. If you, I mean, I, I mean, maybe that's sufficient, but if we, do we have a special voting meeting at the Committee of the Whole in September to give yeah, a little bit longer? Right. I mean, should be sufficient. Well, not, yeah. I mean, sometimes they put they up thirty days, right but at the last 30 exactly. Seconds. So, I mean, I think nine. I think nine days is sufficient, or whatever. But um, or ten days, whatever it is. But that's up to. So, is this the list of surplus? That's the truck. No. Truck. Oh, this is a truck. So we got. The inventory still has to be done for the pickup All right. So. Um, all right. So for the. Just so I, for the the lawn equipment and the or the ground stuff and the key pieces of tools and equipment was our recommendation to put that on municipal to for the whole board. I mean that's our recommendation. Okay, all right. So trucks. Oh, and then the one other thing on those you just said tools, um, the hand tools that are in. I, I have to do an inventory of the <coughs> toolboxes, um, like the middle school garage. I took pictures of, of everything. Um, I was not aware there was that many tools in those rolling tool boxes, uh, to be honest with you. That's a low number. Yeah, and that, that's, only, that's the only other thing we, we, would have to, we would have to talk them about. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, I, I did not realize those drawers were as full as they were with those tools. Um, yeah, because there again, I, I was in and out of the, those spaces. I, I just, I, I apologize for that. I did not, I did not realize they were that full. Right, can you I know? ask a quick question? So. Yeah. Was there any discussion about um, the fact that we might need these things at the beginning year if the GCA contract doesn't work out, and like the right to buy back the stuff that GCA is buying from us at the same price, or a, a certain you know factor depreciation cost or something? Did you have that discussion? Well, we have not. We just start. We really okay. just started when you came in. I mean, that's a good point, okay. and that's one of my concerns with getting rid of. Some of the oh, stuff. I'm liquidating too soon. Same with getting rid of the trucks. I would like to have keep like a few of the older trucks to plows just. To oh, the trucks! I don't think we're get we're getting rid of all of them. I I, I don't think. I mean, we didn't get to the trucks yet. Okay. We were just talking okay. about tools there and equipment. Wow, that means. But. I don't have to answer that, but the, answer, that? the plows okay. additional. Plus yeah, the, plus okay. the, the, yeah. Plow the plow numbers plows. are just for the vehicles. Yes, that's right off Blue Book. I yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. I actually uh, entered all of them into Kelly Blue Book. Okay. And uh, based on mileage and age, and, and that's the number. And uh, the one, uh, the Dodge, is brand new. I'm not sure you even plowed with that, did you? We we plowed the big snow. No, the, the, no, the big, big one. Okay, the, the Dodge, good. Yeah. The other ones weren't available, that's right. Yeah. And uh, and the other one was a year old in December, the, the 15, the 2775, 775 plus plow. Uh, and we we got to wrap this up as yeah. far as the trucks. Um, I mean, I guess can we can we push them off till well? Yeah. I mean, till next month or? Um, I don't want to get rid of those right now. I mean, they're not they're not getting used by anybody. I mean, the tools and the equipment. I think we need to figure out what we're doing because they're using up. it. And if we're not going to sell it to them, and I mean, the, the more they use it, the le the more chance there is of something breaking. With the exception of the one at the very top, the 1992 Chevy. That is salvage. It's over by the middle school. That's in the uh, weeds over there. The twin to what Connor Kurtz bought. Uh, uh, I thought I'd buy it. Even the Jersey Trailer? <laughs> that thing's never going to roll. No, that's the one That's the one up at LeVan's that has the illegal. Oh, no, I thought that was the old band trailer. No, no, no. The one that has the illegal band trailers is the, is the classic Jersey Trailer. Or is it the classic? I, I, I have to check the, the, the... Yeah, I think it's the... Oh. That thing's really old. We'll put, um, we'll put this on for next month if we can do that. All right, sorry. Thank you. <laughs>